Great entrepreneurs quickly reject bad ideas and move to good ideas. We've developed the quick screen to take a look at key variables in making that decision of whether to pursue deep due diligence or to move along to a next idea. The first approach is of course to focus on market demand. If you can look at market demand and the issues related to margin and how that market will provide margin, you have a better opportunity of striking it rich. Here's the key issue here. There is no such thing as a perfect deal. So you will move along the spectrum of higher potential and lower potential ventures with some texture. My recommendation is that everyone on an entrepreneurial team fills this out separately and then you come together to attempt to reconcile your findings, date that reconciliation and use if you plan to go ahead then use it as a an archive as you adjust and shape and change the nature of your opportunity. Second issue is competitive advantages. Remember competitive advantages have to manifest in some financial mechanism over time. So if you produce something because your machine is a new machine that can, or a new technique or a new technology that can produce it at a lower cost, you're going to have lower investment costs and lower fixed costs. If you have a new widget that has smaller costs, then you're going to have a cost advantage. If you have superior service, you'll probably manifest as a price advantage. Again, it is a, it is a spectrum, not an absolute, and you need to reconcile your deep research with where you put this on the spectrum compared to other people uh, and other products and services that you're going to be competing with. And then all of this has to, of course, mean you created some value for the stakeholders, and that's fairly quantifiable. Let's take an important look at time to break even and time to cash flow. You have to keep your nose above water long enough to get to where you're going uh, and you have to make sure that you've capitalized appropriately for that. Investors are typically impatient and those deals that uh, cash flow sooner um, have a better opportunity to realize their full potential. Having said that, if you clearly articulate the timeline uh, and are honest with your investors, uh, you have a better chance that they'll remain patient. Um, I would also suggest you look very hard at the ROI potential. Seldom will it go below 20% uh, in, in any scenario and um, still have the opportunity for funding. And those which exceed 25 and reach as high as 70% are much more likely to get funded, of course. And durable is an important word here. When you're Thinking about that ROI potential, it is over the life of the investment to the point of capital gain. If you can uh, clearly see your way or roughly see your way to that kind of return, that is what I would call durable. The other part that I am sometimes criticized for adding is um, thinking about the exit mechanism before you even begin the venture. Um, I think it's important to understand how you are going to capture the value for yourself and for your investors when you go in. Being having that, uh, creating value and having that value locked up over a very long period can create great angst in an organization and sometimes lead to bad decision making. The overall potential, and this is our last slide, um, is going to give you the go or no go decision and um, some ability to extemporize uh, or focus on uh, how you might shape the opportunity to create the go. So go, no go, go if. And there are always other compelling issues that one cannot capture in a generalized framework that you ought to be thinking about. Just as a quick point, number four, fit, opportunity, resources, and team 
we're looking for a balance in those three.